Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for another episode of Sterling Live. As a reminder, we do go live across Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, so I'm here today, and I'm super excited for this conversation. So I'm here today with Ken Schnee, our General Manager of Technology, Media, Entertainment, and Hospitality. And we are going to be talking about the age of technology and the future of the high hiring process. So Ken, thank you so much for joining me. Can you please go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience? Absolutely, Kaylin. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. Uh, I will say that the uh, only regret I have is having gone through our uh, quick run through on Thursday and learning you were a Giants fan <laughs> and then watching the Giants lose together on Thursday. But you were actually at that Giants game, right? I was, yes. So I, I don't know. Our audience, they might be interested in that topic. But so <laughs> Giants or technology, I don't know if people want to talk about today. That is fair. So let's drive away from that negative topic. <laughs> And go go fast. I, I do appreciate the introduction. And as Caitlin mentioned, uh, I am the general manager of our tech media entertainment hospitality. Uh, going back about 12 years in the industry, my focus has really always been on the evolution of technology and how that really influences how companies hire and place talent within their organization. So I'm really interested to dive into this discussion today and really, it really take some questions in from the audience, but also help you to understand some of the evolution that I've seen over time and what we're seeing here at Sterling uh, as obviously the new times progress here. Absolutely. And I have a ton of great questions for you, Ken. But as you said, everyone who is watching us live right now on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, feel free to send in your questions for Ken and I will give them to him, you know, as I see fit and as we move through this conversation. Um, so you did mention in your, in your introduction, you know, about the evolution of technology. So I do want to start there. So I want to talk about the evolution of hiring and the evolution since March. So since March, meaning the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, so kind of looking at things there. So what has been the evolution of technology companies since March? Yeah, so what's really interesting about the tech industry as a whole is that overall, I would say that it was probably the best prepared industry for the pandemic. And mm -hmm. not only because of sort of the nature of the business, but also because of the culture within those types of organizations. So if you think about tech companies, even before we were in the new normal that we're in now, a lot of them allowed remote work from home. A lot of them embraced technology to support their organization. And so during the time frame, as we all made this transition to a remote workforce, the tech industry was well prepared. However, I wouldn't say they were immune. Uh, there right. was obviously fear across all organizations about what the pandemic meant for the world. And so it didn't go without impact. However, uh, because of their reliance on technology, their transition or their mobilization to remote was much simpler. And right. so that obviously had downstream effects on exactly what they were able to accomplish in that time frame. As you know, outside of tech companies alone, many other industries relied on the tech uh, companies mm -hmm. in order to mobilize their own teams. And so while I would say it definitely had a large impact, and I know we'll talk a little bit about what that impact was, uh, I would say that they were best prepared going into it. So I think that's great. And it's a good point to touch on, you know, being the best prepared, like for something that, you know, not many people were prepared for or organizations. But, you know, putting that aside, you know, like tech companies helping other companies at this time. Um, how has the um, like looking at hiring now? Um, so how has the volume of hiring changed within the tech industry? Yeah, so great question. So we obviously at Sterling have a pretty unique lens on the mm -hmm. volume of hiring. Right. Given that for the majority of folks that are being onboarded, they go through a background check. Uh, what you what we have seen from March forward, again, uh, the tech industry was well suited to make this mobilized move, but 
like I mentioned, it wasn't immune. So we did see about a 20% drop in hiring across our tech segment. Mm -hmm. um, the good part is over the last few months, I would say since June, July, we're seeing that slowly start to incrementally come back up. That's great. And yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason being is that, as we mentioned, uh, that dip, I believe, was because of the fear of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Now, as things sort of begin to settle a little bit, I, I wouldn't say that anybody feels certain right now. Right. Unless you do, Caitlin. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, that fear of uncertainty, there is more known. We know, mm -hmm. you know how COVID has passed and we're, we've got a little bit more control over it. And so we're seeing that 20% now over the past few months turn to 10%. Uh, we expect to see actually some growth towards mm -hmm. the end of the last quarter. And we actually expect 2021 to start uh, hitting growth trajectories that we were seeing at the beginning of 2020, 2020 as well as uh, 2019. And so we think that the tech industry uh, will likely bounce back and be one of the first innovators to show that growth curve going into 2021. So I'm sure this bounce back is a, you know, a, a hot topic when we're talking to our clients, right? So what, you know, as you're talking about this bounce back and this, you know, rise in hiring, what is kind of like the best, you know, practice or that piece of advice that we're giving our clients right now? Yeah, so that is that is a great question. Uh, it's it's really to consider uh, your hiring process as a whole. Okay. Obviously, we go back to the thought that I brought up about the new normal and, yeah. and what does that mean for our organization. Well, it also has downstream effects in what actions we should take in the hiring process, what things we should adapt mm -hmm. to, knowing the new candidates that are coming on. Uh, but I think the, the biggest aspect that we should consider is really uh, how are we how are we being now envisioned by the folks that we're bringing on board without them being able to step a single foot inside mm -hmm. of our office. Uh, and I think as we we talk a little bit about the technology that's now supporting the hiring process, that'll become a little bit clearer. Uh, but but the reason I think we see that ramp becoming a truth going into 2021 is there was that small dip of 20%. But as I mentioned, there's a huge amount of reliance on technology right. firms in the new normal. And so in order to support that moving forward, uh, tech companies are going to really have to step out there, take some risk by growing their teams and support the, the new world, so to speak. Yeah, so that was a great answer. Um, and it, it helps segue into, you know, where I want to go next, you know, because I do want to talk about technology, you know, in the hiring process. So you did just touch on that briefly. So in the tech uh, industry, what are we currently seeing, you know, when adapting a hiring process, just given everything that's going on right now? Yeah, so what's really interesting here is if you take COVID out of this, and I know everybody is probably sick of hearing that word, uh, obviously, uh, but if we take it out and we look back prior to 2020, 2019, 2018, and, and keep going back, there was a natural transition of a move to technology within the hiring process. Right. You have applicant tracking systems that are continuing to innovate. Uh, you have online video conferencing, obviously, that's moved to become a new normal even before COVID. You have all of these pieces within the hiring process that even before we thought about the, the world as it is today, companies were continuing to innovate. And even if you sort of think outside the box a little bit, we were moving away from an right. office process. We were mm -hmm. moving towards a no touch, no no communication. Now, now with that, one thing you have to consider is you want to keep that white glove approach or that feeling with your candidates. Mm -hmm. And so that transition to ta technology naturally allowed this progression into the the error that we're in now, which is basically 100% uh, remote hiring. And so if you look at it, you have the technology side of it, but then you have the culture side of it. Right. So with that technology and maintaining that white glove, how do you now keep that feeling of, you know, you're joining a organization where you can feel comfortable? Unfortunately, there's mm -hmm. not 
you know, pool tables or, or no. free lunch anymore. We have to project our culture mm -hmm. in some other way now that we have technology taking over the process. And so those are really the two aspects of focal point as we move towards the evolution of technology in the hiring process. Have you seen, um, whether it's from clients or just other organizations, you know, that you're looking at talking to, whether it's, a, you know, industry leaders, things like that. Have you seen prime examples of how they are enhancing the experience or that cultural aspect that you just spoke about? Yeah. So, so really it's, it's unique to your company. This is obviously yeah. what makes companies unique. It's, it's why, you know, you and I chose Sterling. Mm -hmm. We felt that cultural connection. And it, it is about being able to, to go back to the days where you were in the office and try and derive what those points were that you believe made people take that leap into your organization. Right. And, and for us, I think, you know, it had a lot to do with the people, right? Mm -hmm. at, at our company, I believe the people are what makes Sterling great. And our ability to have walked that office the first day of the interview and meet people, at least for me, helped me to, to make that decision. And if you're a company like Sterling, you need to find a way to make those connections. Yeah. So whether it's using a Zoom conference call to connect that new potential hire with folks on the team, uh, maybe allowing them to meet with some of the executives sit in on you know, some of our Friday happy hours where we get to, like this Friday, we're dressing up for Halloween <laughs> for costumes. Uh, so- Gotta make it normal, a little fun, a little normal, I get it. That's, that's right, <laughs> exactly, it's, exactly. So. I think it's finding a way to cross that line of mm -hmm. what you would have expected to do had they been able to come in and, and meet face to face and, and where we are now with technology consuming the hiring process. Yeah, and honestly, such a good answer. And for our audience listening right now, Ken has written a bunch of great assets on this already, diving into that culture, diving into that experience, you know, being remote, using tech as that number one driver. So at any time, you can go to our website, sterlingcheck.com and check those out under our resources. Um, like I said, he's written a bunch of great stuff, but that was a great answer for our audience right now. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about, you know, background checks and bringing that into the tech industry. So how can these tech organizations build a foundation of trust and safety? Yeah. So, Which is huge for us. I think I've brought it up on every episode. So because you know, it is one of our, our driving forces for sure. <laughs> so one thing that's interesting that you might think about here is, mm -hmm. OK, um, my employees are working from home now. Mm -hmm. Um, am I concerned about the same things that I was concerned about when they were in an office? Right. If they committed a crime, as, am, is it the same? Is it the same? And in some cases, no. But now your employees have basically no watching eyes, no, no security protocols outside of what your IT team was able to embed over the last few months inside of your uh, your equipment. And so now it, it's it's not that we should do less from a background screening standpoint, right. it's that we should change the lens. Mm -hmm. And so thinking about something like a social media search, where now I'm getting a view into what you might be getting into outside of work, because a lot of those aspects of your work life and your home life are now crossing into Together. each other. Yep. That's exactly right. And That's so- a great point. And so I'm now concerned with your home life, but at the same time, I don't I, I don't want to be so involved in your home life that I'm asking questions. Right. So how do I now draw the picture about you that's important to the organization? And obviously one of the big things that changed is you're now working from home and that that's now a big piece of it. And then other aspects like uh, federal crimes, which would include, include cybersecurity that I might not be doing now because it wasn't a concern. Mm -hmm. Now, if I hire someone remotely and I'm, maybe I'm a, a background screening company like Sterling, I'm concerned with now your ability to infiltrate my system. And so the lens of a background check needs to sort of take a new scope and a new change uh, in the new, the new normal. Listen, everything's virtual. Everything's online right now. So like you said, there might have been things six months ago that companies weren't maybe they were probably concerned about, but they weren't, you know, fully advancing on or totally understanding. So I think that's, you know, a great, great answer to that for sure. Yeah. Um, 
So as we see, you know, the, you know, hiring go up, especially in, you know, the tech industry, you know, we're hoping to get that number up. We've seen a little bit of an increase after the, the most recent decrease there. Um, how can we use background checks to hire the strongest candidates for that specific industry? Yeah, so so the the background check is really designed to come into play once you've made the decision on on who you're going to hire. But right. at the same token, uh, some of the new components that we're talking about, incorporating social media, maybe running even something like monitoring, so that you understand what's happening behind the scenes. Remember, you're no longer you know seeing this person at the water cooler and, yeah. and there is no engagement anymore. And so by using some of these tools to help draw that picture, but then also beyond drawing the picture, mm -hmm. hoping to protect your organization as they become a member of your team is, is really important. And so, you know, making that decision based on what you see and what you know, and not their background, that's definitely crucial. It's important because everybody needs to have a fair chance at, at a job. Mm -hmm. uh, but ensuring that on the backside, you're protecting the organization with the things that are, matter to you and keeping this, this foundation of trust and safety, I think that's the crucial thing to look at, that new lens on, on how to keep your organization safe. Yeah, no, you're right. And it's crucial. It's super important. Um, so in regards to background checks and the uh, screening process, how can best uh, in class technology actually improve that process, make it a little bit better for us? Yeah. So so let's go back to the, the question that we were talking about earlier, where as we see now, companies even before even before that crazy the COVID, uh, companies are and have been investing in technology and it's all it's all and and my my entire career has been about enhancing the user and candidate experience i find right. that you know, background screening is a crucial part of the process but the pain is not often in the fulfillment of the of the data it is in the the workflow for the user and the workflow for the candidate mm -hmm. and so the fewer clicks that you can incorporate the more engagement, so so we keep saying that we're walking away from this white glove, but I think technology needs to bring it back. And so the more less clicks they can have and the more soft touches from, from teammates on the HR team, so whether that's a customized email that comes right. out that's welcoming them to the organization. So I think it's a good mix between using technology to automate and taking away all of that pain and freeing up our time to have those soft touch points where we can begin to build that culture that we've only been able to softly introduce them to because they weren't able to come into our office. Yeah. Okay, so apologies for that. We did have, it's funny, we're talking about technology and we're having tech difficulties. <laughs> Honestly, like how ironic is that? I knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> so what I was saying, um, I did, so the audience did hear your response, so thank you for that. What I was going to add on is that it's interesting as we move to a more virtual, remote, online experience, we almost feel as things should be going faster. It should be easier, easier for us to do things. So I'm very happy and I'm always pleased to see how much Sterling is investing to make the entire experience just so much easier and simple for everyone. So great answer there. So I want to talk about, you know, we did touch on COVID um, and kind of like how that's changing things and like the current times and things like that. So I want to look into, you know, just kind of the innovations that we're seeing, you know, tech companies use. So the question for you is, what are some innovative ways that tech companies will move forward uh, post COVID? Yeah, so so there there are a, a few things to think about here. 
with regards to the the go forward plan. As we talked about earlier, uh, tech companies were were really the innovators mm -hmm. in mobilization of their workforce. And so the biggest question that I think that stood in a CEO's mind prior to COVID with regards to remote work was, if I do this, am I going to lose productivity? Mm -hmm. And am I going to lose talent? Am I going to keep the right people? This, this COVID error has forced organizations to answer those questions. And I think from what we're seeing across all industries, uh, for the most part, outside of obviously not to be blind to, unfortunately, the big impacts out inside of hospitality right. and entertainment that rely on that face-to-face -face contact. Uh, outside of that, we're seeing that productivity is either remaining the same or going up. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that people are, are becoming happier. We're, we're seeing survey results from companies coming back where they're surveying their whole team and, and you know, 80, 90 percent of the organization is saying they'd prefer to actually stay remote. Mm -hmm. And so as as we look forward uh, in technology companies, the innovation that I think you're going to see is a much stronger move towards the mobilization of remote work. We're already seeing companies like Amazon approving their corporate teams into right. uh, June of 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, you've seen Salesforce also uh, push that back. I think that you're going to see that that date start to diminish where there's going to now be an option of, of working from home. And it's not going to be where if this is a remote job. It's going to be if you join our organization, it's up to you. You right. can choose to be remote or not. And, and frankly, I think that this is a, a great new world ahead of us. Uh, the COVID has brought a, a ton of negative energy, mm -hmm. uh, but if, if there's something positive that we can bring out of this, it's that it lifted the fear that existed behind the the world of remote work. And, and now we sort of have answers to questions that we never would have asked. I love that answer. Like it, it, it just hits so many different areas. And I think you're right. There was this fear for a remote workforce in the past. You know, would it work? You know, people, everyone wanted to be in the office all the time. And now we were forced into it and actually seeing a lot of good things, whether it's productivity at work or just building a stronger workforce. Um, so I do love that answer. And I think you hit on a lot of good areas. Um, so we do have a question um, from our LinkedIn platform. So thank you so much for submitting the question. So we did talk a lot about the candidates experience and how tech is improving that. So um, the question comes as, you know, how are we enhancing the client experience with technology? So just not just the candidate experience. Yeah. So that's a great question. And it, it's been, as I mentioned, a focal point uh, of my career is that those are the, the key components. It's your mm -hmm. candidate. Uh, but the user experience becomes even as important, if not more important, because you're physically engaging with the platform day in and day out. Right. And so and so I, I think I'll go back to the optimization of it's it's thinking about minimizing the number of clicks and the number of steps that you need to go through in order to complete a process. So whether we're talking about the applicant tracking experience, or even further down the pipeline, including background and onboarding, and then even onto I-9, it, it's about optimizing that experience. And so if you were to use Sterling as an example, we actually recently launched what we call Client Hub. Mm -hmm. and that has been a, a premium focus on doing exactly that minimizing the number of clicks and enhancing the experience and engagement points between you and the candidate. One example I'll brought up, bring up that's part of it is something called case management, where we've taken what we call the adjudication process of a background check, and we've optimized the experience into a easy to use case management tool where you can move objects around being the, a background report and focus on those and pass them around to team members Whereas before I would have maybe taken that out in an email, sent it to somebody, waited, removed it from the system. So it's things like this, as far as optimizing the experience mm -hmm. that take that can't that that client experience or user experience to the next level and let you engage in the platform in ways that 
you know, you probably thought of in the past, but just weren't there for you to actually utilize. Yeah, and super exciting stuff. We spoke about those enhancements too last week when we sat down live with Justin Jed. So that entire client experience, that entire client hub, you know, really listening and understanding, you know, how we can make it simple, how we can make it easy. So definitely some exciting stuff there. So I'm going to pause for a second um, and our audience live watching right now. If you do have any questions for Ken, please send them in across Facebook, LinkedIn and YouTube. Um, but as we wait to see if there's any additional questions, Ken, you want to give us some final thoughts here? Yeah, absolutely. So so uh, obviously today's discussion heavily focused on technology, the industry mm -hmm. as a whole and the innovation within the hiring process. Uh, one takeaway that I think is, is really crucial to think about here is if the new normal is really the normal and, mm -hmm. and this is where we will continue to move forward. And if you sort of heard my, my piece at the end here about the new normal, whether it exists or not, I believe that the remote workforce will continue to grow. I think as organizations, we need to keep that thought now in the back of our head. So the fear that existed for going remote should now turn into the creative innovation of now moving forward and being remote. Yeah. And outside of the hiring process and background screening, let, we should think about more deeply on, on how do we communicate to our candidates as they're coming on board and they're learning about our culture and they're just first getting to know the people within our organization. How do we use the tools that we have today to build those engagement points and make sure that we're projecting our culture, that new people are getting to engage with the people in the organization that they're gonna need to know, but maybe even the people that they don't need to know. If you think about back before COVID, I could have walked around the office and I could have met everybody and I could have learned about everything. Right. How do I get that same approach now in the new world and now the new world that I believe will continue, how do I encompass all of that and really start to allow people to connect on a new level? Such a great way to wrap up this conversation. Um, and I truly do appreciate it. Um, at this time, we don't have any further questions. Um, so we'll definitely go ahead and wrap things up here. So again, Ken, thank you so much for joining us today. We had such a great conversation in regards to technology, the future of the hiring process, and everything like that. So thank you for your insights. Um, for our audience watching right now, thank you for joining us. Um, you can visit our website at any time. I know I spoke about, you know, Ken's not just here live with me right now. He's creating assets on the site. He's doing other webinars, things like that. So you can go to sterlingcheck.com and check all of that out. Um, you can always ask us questions or visit our social media platforms for the latest and greatest from Sterling. Um, so again, yeah, we will see you guys next week. We're actually at 8 a.m. Eastern next week. So we're kind of throwing a bit of a curveball at everyone. Uh, we are going live next week at 8 a.m. Eastern. Um, every other week, it will be at 1 p.m. Eastern. But Again, Ken, thank you. And thank you to our audience. Thank you.